Coming off of a game that saw us off to a quick start, finding Ed Jarrett to end the first drive with a touchdown, we would only manage a field goal. The remainder of the first half of the defense was locked down. No points given up in that first half, but the second half was a near opposite story as the Tennessee Titans would go on to score 17 to three, stealing yet another game away from us with a final score of 17-13. We once again did not see this offense come through for us. The passing game specifically across the middle was truly awful in that last game, missing several opportunities. It wasn't the receiver's fault most of the time. I don't think we had very many drops at all. It was bad accuracy from Stroud, who only completed about 45, I think, percent of his throws. So was not very good. We need to see better from him and maybe taking a little bit of pressure off of him would be nice, though somehow we have another tandem breakout opportunity. We missed the one last week with Ed Jarrett. This one is still Ed Jarrett. Another opportunity. They really want him to do well. He did get our one and only touchdown last game. So once again, we're going to challenge Ed Jarrett. We need to see him in this offense step up. He's a rookie who definitely shows a lot of promise. We do get another free 2,500 experience points for Palmer. And it's the same challenge we saw last time. 150 receiving yards, this time against the Panthers, who have a much better secondary. So we'll see if he can get the job done again. Another bonus goal, or another bonus if he meets his goal. Again, that 150 receiving yards. Now, as we have, or at least started doing last episode, before we jump into the game, again, going to take a quick look at some scouting. Now, we obviously traded for C.J. Stroud, though our national scout is quarterbacks, and there seem to be some pretty good ones. Depending on how the deep accuracy turns out here for Caleb Harris, he could look really good. Out of Wyoming, he could very well be an Allen 2.0 at 6'5", 234, 22 years old. He has good to great speed with great to elite throw power. He looks extremely intriguing. We did trade away a second and a fourth or second and a fifth for Stroud. So we didn't give up a first rounder. I believe we have two first round picks. If I'm not mistaken, it's at least going to be one. But he looks like he could be a really good and is probably the best of the bunch, though there are a whole lot of options. One thing I do feel like we are missing on this team is a true down the field threat at receiver. We have a lot of physical guys and they've done pretty well, better than any of the previous years, but we don't have that true threat downfield. Now, I don't believe we have a superstar or an X factor at that in this receiving core. But there are some decent options with some intriguing ratings. Down here in the round three to four, there is a really intriguing at least build of a player in Jordan Hartwell. Dude is 6'8", 215. Out of Michigan, he's a physical type with good to great speed though. I don't know, we'll see how this guy ends up turning out. He doesn't appear to be a great down the field route runner with D medium and F deep. Short is a B to a D, though I'm going to probably imagine that's on the shorter end of it, considering the other ones. Release-wise is a C, so okay, but the hands look really solid with a just freakish physical build. Could be pretty intriguing. Outside of him, another round three to four that I have some interest in is Darnell Norwood, an actual deep threat archetype. 6'3", 220, out of Maryland, 22 years old. Not as fast, though, which is a bit of a drawback. Getting not great with a medium route running. That's a D. But C for deep. Again, we need the downfield guy. It's a possibility. The hands are a little bit in question, but he has some after-the-catch ability with a break tackle. Don't expect he'd be fantastic, but around three to four gives me some intrigue to try to find out a little bit more. And then obviously a main problem for us this year has been the offensive line and there are plenty of options for us. Won't go into too much detail on these guys, but it is a deep class. At left tackle, we have at least four draftable. And then there's even a pair of undraftable that actually look like they might be pretty decent backups at least. Glenn Portis looks pretty good out the get go right now, though we could use a little bit more information. We also have Perriman and Bennett that both look like they are probably, I would say maybe two and three, depending on those other ratings. At left guard, we have 
three draftable options. They all look like they could be pretty solid. Center, another three at right guard, just one, but some pretty decent looking potential on drafteds. And then right tackle, another three. So we have plenty of options that we may not have to try to find a free agent, though they're probably going to be the more developed if we could find some good ones. But the offseason is a half a season away as we are in week 10. First half did not go all too well for us. One and seven, though I could easily see that first half really being a three and four kind of season. If we just a few things shifted their way a little bit. The last two games could have and probably should have been wins. We'll see if we could right that ship here against a pretty good Carolina Panthers team. And they are very much built for the passing game, both offensively and defensively. Offensively, seventh in points per game, fourth in passing yards per game, defensively, ninth in passing yards per game, averaging 211. We need 150 just for Jarrett, so we'll see what happens in this matchup. Monday night prime time, we are underway. Needing to see a whole lot more from this offense and they will be the first ones out. As Williams finding some space down the middle will start up at the 28. CJ Stroud did not have a good game last time out, just 45% completion. Need to see a whole lot more. Well, at least one positive is he's not turning the ball over. But we're not gonna start with him here. Akers once again to kick off a game as we bounce it to the outside. Look for a little bit of a cutback close to the first down. They mark it second and one. If we're going to see much of Jarrett today, it's going to have to be a whole lot of receptions through the passing game as they do bring down their safety. Sitting back in coverage across the middle, Palmer does not get the grab. Takes a shot as the ball pops around a little bit. Luckily, it's not picked off. We can definitely use Palmer having a good game today as well back from injury of last week as it's third and one here. Gibson out there will get close and they, they give us a little bit of some advantage there. Pick, giving us the first down. Did not look like we were there. I definitely thought Odigizua got the stop, but instead first and 10 for us at the 39. Going to a little bit of some play action. Let's get this one out quickly. Interesting how we can never get a running back or a fullback on the move out of the backfield. Donovan Knight actually loses a yard there as he's playing with some fullback here with the substitute at running back. As we're going to launch this one up here, one-on-one -on -one for Jarrett, but Horn breaks it up. We need him to start winning some of those one-on-ones, but we'll change things up here on third and long. With a tight shotgun look, going to send pretty much everyone to the left-hand side, leaving Akers alone on the wheel route. See if he can find some space as we just need to find some space in general as the safety chin comes down, jumping that one. Started this drive talking about the lack of turnovers given up and well, we give one up there. We very much saw our quarterback stare down his one receiver as it looks like the Panthers have Matt Corral out there today, Bryce Young a bit injured. And that's to put things lightly. At some point this season, couldn't tell you what week, he actually tore his ACL. His season is done. As they're going to have some space down the middle, close to, but not picking up the first down. Third and inches. But we'll be sending the heat here. Double A gap blitz against their bunch to the right hand side. Not a whole lot of pressure, though. Nick Bell trying to get out there, dives, misses. Another dive coming up empty, and Corral dives down at the seven. His defense did not record a single sack last game. Almost, I guess last episode would have worked too. But yeah, did not record a single sack and they missed their opportunity and it bites them big. As Jonathan Mingo ends their drive with a touchdown, grabbing an early lead. Early mistakes really headlining this game so far as the offense retakes the field. Now down, CJ Stroud has not put together a pretty good last couple performances, and he throws another pick. Just a great play by Jackson, who has a missing defender. Offensive player diving in front of him, but just like that. They're at the 16, set to score again. 
When it rains, it pours, and that's really just what happens with this team, both good and bad. When things are flowing one way, they flow hard. As Matt Corral looking to scramble again, dives with a gain of two. Honestly, at this point, after three pretty bad seasons, you would think that even Marshall Falk, the legend he is with the Rams, could end up being fired. Coordinators probably will be. Been through at this point four or five different quarterbacks. Potentially there might even be another one. We talked again at the beginning of the episode about what is held in this draft class and there might need to be some sweeping changes. And for all those to take place, who knows on if that might mean we might have to say goodbye to maybe some of these defensive players that really seem to be mainstays as they give them the touchdown there. They say Donovan Casey breaks the plane. Swain was close, but apparently not close enough. And after starting the offensive day, one of five passing and two interceptions, you could really only go up from here. As we try to set up the halfback screen, get it out to Akers, he will manage some yards, actually completing a pass as well. If that gets us going, then I will take it. As we have second and four, hard count, no one jumps. Going to have to step up in the pocket, going downfield and almost intercepted by Chin again, plus a flag is down. Stroud throwing the ball just too late there, past the line, leaving third and eight. As we'll go again with some play action, no time to throw, rocked as Burns hits home, plus there was another, but doesn't matter, offense off the field yet again. And someone's got to tell the studio director to stop using cuts that show Bryce Young heading out in the field. It's still Corral. Bryce Young still with a torn ACL as Casey right down the middle, picking up a whole lot of yardage for the 45. Coming off a of bye week, not what you imagined we would be seeing here. Definitely a lack of effort for sure, but a great stop there by Lawson and an injury for Taylor Moten. And at least doesn't appear to be too severe. He'll just head to the bench. Hopefully we'll see him back out there shortly. Well, the second and 13, they swing it to the outside, finding their, no, I don't think that's their tight end. Actually check that is their tight end. Hunter Henry replaces Tommy Trumbull for the Panthers as they come out with a ace pistol set. Another quick throw across the middle, knocked away by Adebo. We could really use an interception, a force fumble, something here from this defense. Try to spark a little bit of life in this team. Instead, they go deep downfield, wide open, diving miss, touchdown, Deontay Johnson. Make it a three score lead. And we better see our team wake up quickly. Giving up 21 points in the first quarter alone is gonna be pretty hard to come back from. With a throw to the outside, it's almost picked again. Panthers are all over us right now. Honestly, not sure what this team could do moving forward. They're just not finding much. And when we have a wide open receiver, we miss the throw. And on another third and long, there's only one thing this team knows how to do when we get to this situation. We do get it out, Acres with some space. Gonna pick up the first down and out of bounds. We've only completed three passes so far today. And what makes that stat even worse it's just one better than the amount of interceptions we've thrown. As time is ticking off the clock here, trying to roll out. Let's try to get this one out of the defender. Definitely bumps Nakua there. No flag thrown. They kind of just feel like we're going to have to get some big plays downfield to really stay in this game much at all as that one is almost another interception. Luckily dropped, leaving another third and long. Hard counts. Multiple people moved. Who's the ref going to call first? And it's going to be on us. Very fitting, leaving us with third and 15. No hard count here, just straight up play. Thrown right at the safety chin with another interception. Stroud has played his worst that we've seen from him today. Came in with one interception. At the end of the first quarter, he already has three. Now we just have to hope that the Panthers don't add on any more points here with 12 seconds left in the first quarter. They're already up three touchdowns. As they go the run to the outside, hey, there's at least not a touchdown that should end the first quarter. An absolutely awful showing 
We've had a combined 23 yards offensively, almost the same amount of points that the Panthers have. We want to talk about choking on prime time as we start the second quarter. Down 21-0, needing someone to make some plays here, and by someone I meant someone on our side. Not anymore from the Panthers, though now they're down inside the red zone. With a first and 10 at the 19, sticking with the passing, once again, still no pass rush, and a easy five yard gain. Could have potentially even been more for Johnson, who did have, I wanna say, their last touchdown. As they stay spread here, Matt Corral having a fantastic game, filling in for Bryce, who honestly could have had a touchdown there, and Debo even could have had an interception. Would have been nice, giving us at least one highlight here as it's now third and five. Trying to limit their points to at least a field goal attempt. Bell misses, Peak does not have the speed, and once again, we miss out on a sack opportunity, and they score. Corral with another touchdown, make it 28-0 early in the second quarter. But as we head out, it is not CJ Stroud. Bo Harold has retaken the field. Hard count, no one jumps. What are we going to get from the young quarterback who was replaced earlier this season? He starts with a short run, and we're right back to it. I say short run, it's a gain of seven. Not too bad for a really not extremely athletic quarterback. Going to find Jarrett right off the go as we're in the plus territory, keeping this thing moving. Harold says get back to the line, but the team going to take their hot second to get there. Going to motion over Tremble. A little bit of some more play action. Palmer had the step, though the hold from the cornerback, the refs don't call anything. Finally get this offense going a little bit, and the Panthers already are having to cheat a little bit, though that pass a little bit too far out in front, though Madden says good accuracy. Clearly they don't know what's happening, and we have a third and 10 after a quick start with Harold. Calming down, and I think Smith jumped. Another time we force our own offensive line to jump off sides. And we brought in Smith to try to solidify this offensive line, and he really has not had a good season. As it's third and 15, needing to find something. How about we take a shot? Jarrett gets the catch a little hop there for some reason, then gets upended. But we're down to the 13, quickly getting back to the line once again. Harold has come in, and offense bouncing back a little bit, though a quick tackle there from Thompson just at the line. Though, again, Right back to it. Needing to find some points here. Let's actually change the route here from Jarrett. Go on the slant. Try to get Nakua leaking around the end. Though if we put it up, which we don't. Needed a little bit more height on that for Jarrett. Might have been it. Instead, another third and ten here. We're not going to go with a hard count because that clearly is not working. And no time to throw. Bo Harold sacked. Fourth and eleven. And some coaches... May call the field goal here, but we're down 28-0. Halfway through the second quarter. We need some touchdowns. Lofting this one up. Nakua into the end zone. Finally, something goes our way, and it's bringing back Bo Harold. Finding Nakua. And we're on the board 28-7. Way too early to say we're back or anything like that, but... Let's see what the defense can do here on this drive as they start with a run to the outside. And while well, they already have some space, though a flag comes in, I would imagine this is going to be holding. And that's exactly what it is, though it was also like seven yards downfield. So not great for them. Make it first and 13 as they motion over their fullback to the right-hand side. Trying to get back to the outside, not finding anywhere near as much space. A gain of one. Solomon gets the tackle. And surprisingly, almost the opposite of last game, I feel like the defense doing better while playing zone in this one. So we'll stick with that, see if we could build anything good for the defense off of it. As Corral steps up, makes a guy miss, and diving as Carl Lawson shaken up. No real indication as towards the magnitude of that, so we're going to see the rookie in Stevenson head out there here on third. Swinging to the outside, they will pick up the first down, taking a shot from Murray. But we do have an early indication from the medical staff, and it does not appear that Lawson will be returning in this one. He struggled with injuries quite a lot in his few starts, as that's just a really bad job from Curse. 
Okay, at least get Swain to slow him down. Graham gets the stop, but they're to the 34. But we really are to get back in this game. We will need a turnover, but we have not really gotten close to doing much defensively. As they hand this one off, good stop there from Nick Bell. Though I do feel like Bell might be a possible trade target for a, a tradee, someone that we could get rid of in the offseason, depending on what our needs are. As Casey trying to break to the outside, he's breaking the tackles, but finally that ankle gets caught up. We'll get dropped as we hit the two-minute warning. Panthers pretty close, if not in field goal range here. They keep things heavy on third and nine. They will be passing from it, though. Could use a sack, but once again, Corral gets to the outside. Swain, just an awful attempt. Adebo comes up empty, and Graham flies over to smack him down. Corral has already ran for 78 yards and a touchdown today, plus three more throwing touchdowns. Who would have thought this was the game we would see from a quarterback who I'm not even sure is in the league right now. Maybe a practice squad as we send an extra blitz there finally. You know, first sack for us in about a game and a half comes from the rookie linebacker sent on the blitz. Would just love to not give up any more points here before half though that might require us to force some form of a turnover as they have options in the back of the end zone. Corral is actually going to step up and dive forward. Honestly, I think we need to be running a lot more quarterback spy here. So let's run that with Graham, though they're setting up the halfback screen, and that bump there just shakes it off enough. Fourth and goal, I expect the field goal unit out. And indeed, that's what we see. Trying to tack on some more points would be their fifth score of the half, and it does not come with much of any defense from us. It is up and through. Make it 31 to 7. So can Bo Harold continue the magic that he sparked with this team the last time out? We have 34 seconds, all three timeouts. Going right down the seam, Nakua almost had it again. That pass needed to be about a yard taller. But as we were coming into this game, we knew how good this Carolina secondary is. And unfortunately, we're having to try to find ways to get through it, though we can't find a way to throw it a sack timeout called Carolina is they're even wanting more points here they're already up 31-7 and I think we had a Vila jump once again very much seems to be a clear lack of discipline on this squad 27 seconds left it's third and long trying to set up a halfback screen to Akers who will get something but will have to punt and they want the ball back now, what would be fantastic here is we get a pick six. That would really, really boost some morale. Now, why would they hand the ball off after calling all those timeouts to get the ball back? That's just confusing. But confusion is how we head into halftime. A truly, truly awful first half there. Down 31 to seven. I can't even say there's a lot of work to do here because it's more than work at this point. It's another complete rebuild but as we get the second half underway defense out first we're going to need a complete and utter turnaround from both sides if we're to make anything happen or if the panthers just want to completely collapse too i mean i'm i'm honestly fine with that they start with a heavy set going with a spread run or a stretch run doesn't gain them much a turnover force, though, once again. I mean, that kind of seems to be what we really need or just some sure tackling just to wrap up. But we at least have an opportunity to get off the field here. On third and short, we send the blitz, but it's wide open down the middle. Casey trying to sprint away. Swain in pursuit. Got him down at about the 10. His defensive line just is not doing their thing. Well, the first and goal now. They go with some play action. Matt Corral looking to scramble once again. Cuts up and does not get the touchdown. For some reason, we have Johnny Smith in coverage, and he gets the tackle. But honestly, at this point, we're just going to send the heavy blitz once again. And there's a stop from Curse. Casey not going anywhere that play. Though he already has 124 yards. Again, trying to send some more blitzing. But they throw, and Deontay Johnson was completely and utterly... <laughs> wide open some more points tacked on for the panthers well offense what do you got here down 31 points 
And we're not even close to the end of the game here. Launching this one deep, it's Parkinson! And double coverage does not bring it down. I mean, really at this point, offense just trying to find something here. And they're just going to be taking shot after shot. Tossing this one up, Marshall does bring it in. Breaks one tackle, but not going to get away. Right back out to it. That seems to be what we do here. Get something positive and just keep trying to build off of it. As we go to Akers, cutting back to the left-hand side. Has a blocker in front in Charles, but we could have used that peel back on Thompson. First down gain, though. And again, back to the line pretty quickly. Now trying to set up some slants. They cover that pretty well. Rolling out. Harold on the run. Marshall with the catch to the 30. We're not going to hurry up from there. We need to rotate. But it definitely seems like this offense moving pretty well here with Bo Harold. Ayers out there, the rookie receiver. We're going to go his way and double coverage. Again, need that ball higher. And we'll definitely probably get some of these other guys out there more so as the season continues along. Needing some space across the middle. That ball well behind the intended target and another interception. Just the first for Bo Harrell today as the Panthers take over, ruining the fun. Just see who can make a play in this one. That's really all we're looking for. Does someone random make the play? Or Deontay Johnson should have been a tackle for a loss instead of a gain of eight. Matt Corral, though, definitely doing his thing, given the opportunity, has put on an absolutely fantastic performance. Casey also has ran very well as he goes over 130. This defensive line, I don't even know if they've recorded a tackle for a loss in the last couple weeks. They haven't recorded a sack. The one and only sack was Solomon as <laughs> spinning away from the tackle for a loss. Maybe that one's a for a loss. It's at least at the line. We have a lot of young guys on this defensive line, but none of them really seem to be doing the job. Obviously past the trade deadline at this point. As there's a good stop from Rice on number six, Sanders. And we have ourselves a third down here, an opportunity to get off the field if we do our part. And it will be a throw, Corral from the pocket, right across the middle, caught first down. And the crazy part about this is Corral has had three passing touchdowns on only about 115 throwing yards. He has almost the same amount in terms of rushing yards as well. But definitely did not expect to see such great play from this quarterback. Might need to check his ratings at the end of this one just to see if Madden's just having fun with us today. As KC down the middle, another first down. Almost at a buck 50. And the thing is, I would love to put in some backups, but really the, the backups, they really don't need to be out there as Murray misses the sack opportunity. Swain gives up another touchdown. Hunter Henry over the top. But what's really over the top is this score line, 45 to 7. As we go across the middle and another almost interception from Chen. This team just trying to find really anything, almost not really even playing true football at this point. As another almost sack happens. As we also graciously enter the fourth quarter down a whole lot of points. It's really just us trying to have fun at this point. Setting up a halfback screen, trying to get it out there quickly. Akers cannot spin away. But at this point of the game, I think we just have some fun with it on defense. Let's see what happens if we just send all the linebackers every single play. See how many points the Panthers can rack up. We're either going to finally get some tackles for a loss or this game is going to end 80-7. to It's going to be one or the other. As Casey breaking to the outside, another big chunk game. And they're at least already running clock here in the fourth quarter. Letting this play clock roll down. Casey down the middle, cutting back in. Not going to get anything. Will be a loss as Swain comes down to get the tackle. Again, not the defensive line recording a tackle for a loss. Second and 11. Again, sending the blitz. Big hit there from Murray as Donovan Casey, after such a good game, looks like he's picked up a little knock. He did take a big hit there from Murray and... Luckily, he just heads to the sideline. Looks like it might be a shoulder potential injury. And hey, there we go. A sack from Murray Jr. I said we're going to get these one way or another. It's either going to be 80 points or a sack. And hey, we got a sack. Now, what kind of shenanigans can this offense get into? Again, we needed Jarrett to have 150 total yards receiving in this game. That definitely hasn't happened. As we toss this one out for Marshall, Horn easily knocks that one away. 
But also, I feel like we haven't really even seen Jarrett out there much at all today. I don't remember him picking up any sort of injury as Harold tries to lower the shoulder, makes it third and one. And yet, yeah, no, Jarrett is out there now. Really have no idea why he hasn't been playing. He's above everyone else in the depth chart. We're just not seeing him doing much as there's a great throw and catch. We find Tommy Trumbull for the first down. Just have to wonder where that's been all game. We'll say Bo Harold has come in and has done at least some fun things as we do have ourselves a first down here. Trying to step up. Once again, we'll take a hit, lowering the shoulder, second and three. Is it the safest thing to do with your quarterback? No, but it's 45-7 and Harold isn't even our starting quarterback. He's just the only one semi-playing decently here as there's Jarrett. Gets the catch. It is his third reception for 63 yards. So if we could just double that plus a little bit extra here late on, who knows? As we could have looked for him there, didn't quite open up. And what kind of throw is that? Now Jarrett switching over to the left side here. Just over three minutes left in the game. We have the one-on-one, -on -one, but nowhere near enough time to get the ball out there. And now we have a third down and Jarrett not out there. Were we trying to force feed on the ball? Yes, we were. And instead we throw a pick to an intended receiver who was about 10 yards behind the guy who intercepted the ball. Because why not? Topping it off here, Panthers game has just gotten ridiculous. Oh, and I even forgot to call the blitz play here, so I already messed that up, but hey, there we go. Tackle for a loss. But do not worry. Back to the blitzing of all the linebackers, sending all the D line, and if the cornerbacks want to blitz, eh, they can as well. As we're just about out of time left in this one, almost breaking away, though it's a gain of a few yards. Stewart was pretty close to getting the tackle for a loss there, but coming up a little bit short as it's now third and eight. We send the blitz once again. Number six does not get the first down. Sanders makes it fourth and two. And would you look at that defense forcing a punt here. We'll have at least one more possession of offense to, I don't know, maybe see something. Though even if we solely throw this ball to Jarrett the whole way down the field, I still don't think it's going to be enough to get him that 150. But we might as well try it. To the sideline here, he's wide open with the catch at the 46. Let's get right back to it. A minute, 12 seconds, still out there. Didn't have to use a timeout to get him back out there. Let's keep sending the guy deep as he definitely has a little bit of some DPI happening there, but no flag. Now playing a little bit of off coverage, single high safety. Though they do drop, I think that was Chin who was sitting underneath. Still gonna go back to Jarrett and the corner didn't even try to cover there. He was gonna let him score. The ball just wasn't close. So now we have a third and 10. Hard count, no one jumps. That's a little bit of a surprise. One on one again, going back to Jarrett. It's now like a five on three. I don't, that doesn't even make mathematical sense. I think it was four on two, but it's at least a fourth and 10. And that I know is correct. Under a minute left here. This might just be the last play of this episode, unless, just kidding. Another sack that will do it for us here. That is probably the most ridiculous game of Madden I have ever played. And I've played a whole lot of Maddens. Honestly, not even a whole lot more to say about it. Just absolutely ridiculous. But we had fun with it. And for those wondering, Matt Corral is a 68 overall, uh, 26 years old, a normal dev who has okay accuracies. I mean, he has some good athleticism, solid throw power, but nothing I would expect. 58 awareness. <laughs> he should not have been playing at the level of which we just saw, but it's what we get here. And despite having a second opportunity, once again, we did not get the job done here for Ed Jarrett. So another opportunity missed out on seeing him further develop. But as we move on to week 11, we are one and eight, and these games have just been either really, really close, really intriguing, and we give it away, or absolutely ridiculous as today was. 
I think what we're going to do for the remainder of this season is we're going to make it a two-game special for the remainder, just as we did with season one. If you don't like that or think we should stick with the normal format, you could definitely let me know. Leave it down in the comments section below. But that is at least what I'm thinking. What I'm worried about is since we started this series as soon as Madden came out, I feel like there might be some form of a bug or something with the save. I'm not sure because... The play we're seeing is dramatically different than what I've seen in all of my other series, though. Playing on all Madden versus playing on all Pro Sim are going to be a little bit different. But all in all, this this has just been ridiculous <laughs> for sure. But we're having fun with it. Let me know if you're having fun with it, even when we get blown out 45 to 7. So hit that barrack on the bottom right or scroll down, hit the subscription button, and definitely tick the bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. This series every single Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday with the state-only challenge every Wednesday and Saturday. Season 4 of the Central Plains starts tomorrow, so don't miss that one. And until next time, we'll see what happens. No promises. Madden 24 has been a very strange game. So who knows? Bye.